morning chat. Uh, my name is Miles. I am a polymath, which means I do a bit of everything. I don't do anything particularly well, but some things I do a lot more than others. Uh, some of those things include philosophy, politics, uh, physics as well, mm -hmm. um, teaching, and various other things. Uh, I work as a web developer. I am also a campaign organizer for Fusion Party. I'm um, also from the Pirates. So my my talk, I'm going to make it, make an argument. Drew, you can start now. I'm, I'm going to make an argument that, uh, that can everyone see my slides okay? Yes. Yep. Excellent. I'm going to make an argument that uh, Fusion is a meta-modern political party. And so what, what does that mean? Well, this is going to be a very info-dense talk. I will apologize in advance. Metamodernism is an emerging movement in art, society, politics, and philosophy. The key principle is this idea of oscillation, that we can sort of revolve around things and that we always are revolving around things and that we should revolve around things. The uh, main kind of people involved in metamodernism are the Triple H community, hackers, hackers, hipsters, and hippies, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. And um, politically, we can see this as the Nordic ideology in um, exemplified in the Scandinavian countries, also known as green social liberalism 2.0. So in the Nordic countries, they have a very good public health and education sector. They have an effective justice system based on rehabilitative justice. They have universal concern for progressive politics, environmentalism, climate change, but also balanced out by human rights and the democratic process. And finally, they have a well-regulated capitalist market and finance sector. So hence, green social liberalism. Uh, a little bit about the philosophy of metamodernism. It's this uh, idea that it's a dialectical synthesis between modernism and postmodernism, which integrates the two and uh, and sort of uh, transcends the issues with them both, where modernism presented this idea that there is a hard objective truth about reality. Postmodernism was a response to that, which said there is no hard objective truth about reality. Everything is subjective. Everything is relative. Metamodernism proposes almost like a compromise between the two, that there is a kind of intersubjective truth which is functionally objective and operates at the subjective intersection of multiple truths, just like a, a Venn diagram. So we have this kind of both and thinking. So uh, the first demographic, who are we? We are hackers. Uh, hackers innovate and develop technological solutions. It's not just a person who legally gains access to computer systems. Uh, this, they produce software that engages the complexity of society and makes it manageable. And uh, they also make use of cultural capital and social capital by bypassing the old capitalist ways of distributing services and information by digitalizing and gamifying processes and finding novel applications of technology. The second demographic hipsters, they're not just people with a particular style of fashion. They're not just pretentious college kids who show off their supposedly good taste in music and art. Instead, they produce symbols that help us orientate ourselves and make sense of and find meaning in the world. Here you'll find artists, designers, thinkers, writers, bloggers, social entrepreneurs. They develop ideas like post-humanism, transhumanism, complexity, network theory, participatory politics and social movements, economic critique, ecological and social resilience, personal development, organizational development, new gender and sexual relations, alternative forms of family community life. And they embody these thoughts by creating music, fashion, movies, books, and games. The third demographic is hippies. They're people who produce new lifestyles, habits, and practices make life in a post-industrial society happier, healthier, more enchanted. And these are people with highly developed skills in meditation, in contemplation, in bodily practice, in psychedelics, diet and physical training, profound forms of intimate communication and sexuality, simple life wisdoms that apply to our day and age. But you will find rational and research-based approaches here to psychedelics and eco-village and science-driven meditation and stress release practices. A, a good sort of hub example of modern hippie culture is Burning Man with uh, communities spring up around the world in, in Australia that includes Modifier, Blazing Swan, and Burning Seed. And there at, you will find MDMA-induced art projects, large, impressive, and meaningless structures that are built as temporary art projects for no other reason that they are fun and interesting. So so what what, what kind of unifies us? We are, there's kind of like a, 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 a some ideas floating around that we are a compilation of all these different intersecting identities. Some of us identify very strongly with with one or two labels. Some of us pick a million labels and can never decide. And some people just say we should have no labels at all. But uh, fundamentally, we're each kind of have a, have a post-work relationship with the economy. We operate in the precariat, in the gig economy, where, um, where it's not so important what we do. We don't really define ourselves by that, but rather who we want to become. 
So, uh, like like any kind of <laughs> rationalist, I want to present a mathematical model for social change, which I've been playing for for a while. Bear with me. Um, so we have a uh, Hooke's law here, which is obviously you apply a force to a spring, and then it goes out and oscillates and comes back. And that looks awfully similar to our values framework in fusion, where you can, unlike a spring, which is one dimensional here, you, it is, you can go in either direction, start from either end, either the practical end or the ideal end. The force is the initial idea that you propose. And then you sort of sort of propel yourself through this process, through each of the values. And then, then the retracting force pulls you back towards the start. So you can go through this as many times as you like. I'm going to skip the two uh, alternative um, other options out there. So I want to talk to finally finish what is our program that um, ultimately we have metamodernists has superior mimetic power that we will outcompete capitalism. And to do so, we have to adopt this kind of ironic sincerity or informed naivete and, uh, and adopt these six strands of politics, democratization, fellowship, existential politics, emancipation, empiricism, and, and effective theory. Thank you.